Perfect. Okay. All right. Today, uh, we're going to be talking about um, kind of the same topic we've been doing the last couple days here, which is percents. But now what we're talking about today is the uses. Like, what would we everyday people use a percent for other than our basic story promises? Well, the number one thing that most people would use it for is discounts and sales tax. This is how we, you know, if you're going shopping, percents is a huge deal when you're in when you're in a department store of any type or you're making purchases online. Um, and so these are the things that most people have to think about. Um, uh, so we're going to do a few examples today. We'll kind of do a little activity here in class to see if you can kind of pay attention. We'll uh, see how well you do. All right. Uh, and then after that, then I'll give you time where you can work on your story promise. Now, the homework that we got yesterday, which is page 150, 152, 155, those are story promises we've worked on since Wednesday in here. Actually, I think we might have introduced them Monday. But uh, anyways, we started working on them Wednesday uh, for the most part. And then that assignment is due the Monday after spring break. So that's the one that I know a lot of people have not turned in yet because it takes a while. Um, if you have not turned that in today, we've got to make sure we're working on that. You can't be on any other uh, technology thing until that's done. Okay? All right. But first and foremost here, let's talk about discounts and percents. So um, let's say we're going to purchase an item. Let's say we're going to purchase... Um, a what? Xbox One. Okay. All right. That works. Wow. We're going to purchase an Xbox. All right. Now, how much are they right now? Are they $2.99? $1.50. $2.50. $2.50. All right. Yeah, $2 .50. $2 .50. All right. Okay, we're going to go 250 bucks. Uh, we'll go even. Okay. Now, let's say, for some reason, Best Buy shipped you a discount card. Let's say that, for some reason, they ship to your house that you get 15% off. Well, that's a huge Best Buy. Yes, that is definitely a big, big saver, right? 15% off. So what we need to do is figure out what price we're going to actually have on the sticker of that Xbox that we're going to be purchasing. Right? So, how we do this? You take your price times the percent. Okay? So, when we do that, 250, 250 bucks, times. Now, how do we write a percent as a decimal? We move the decimal two spots. Two spots. So, what is that 15% as a decimal? Uh, two, five. Uh, 15%? Oh, no, 1.5. No. Zero point. There you go. So, All right. 0.15. I'm so we get there. All right, 0.15, right? So we're going to take 0.15 times 250. What this number will be, this price, what they're going to give us, this will be the actual discount that we're going to get on this purchase. It will not be the final price of the purchase. It's the discount we're going to receive. So, um, somebody have a cup in here? So, Jason, you got a cup in front of you. If anyone else does, okay, 250 times the 0.15, please. There, Sean. Sean, do it. Thirty-seven point five. Thirty-seven point five. All right, we're getting thirty-seven point five dollars off. That is our discount. That is not what we're going to pay for the Xbox. This is the money that's coming off of it. So in the store, or maybe they have the advertisement above the rack, or whatever you're going to be purchasing, whatever they tell you the percent, you multiply. And that's the price coming off of what your total is. So you'll have to do do a little math. You're going to actually have to take the two fifty and actually subtract the 37.5. So that's, that's you, you know what you got. You got $37 off. But what is the final price of that item? $212.50. Who should? $212.50. I do this every time I go and buy something over like 100 bucks. At Target, you know, you get the 5% off. Oh, everything. yeah. So I try to figure out the tax and then minus the 5%. Yep. Yeah. So that's the trick. Um, when, when there's discounts, you got to calculate the discount first, because this is now the sticker price. Um, and here's the thing, you should check whether those sticker prices are correct. Uh, if you go into a department store like Target or Walmart or Kohl's, and they you know they say hypothetical 15% off or 30% or whatever percent they're going to give you, that sticker may be wrong. You know, maybe this is what it says on the sticker, but maybe that's not correct, because maybe they subtracted the wrong number. So you gotta be, you gotta kind of check that. That's kind of a deceiving thing that some of those department stores do. I know one of the things that I've noticed in Target, they'll say they're having a sale, right? So they'll have a look at a sale sticker on the price. If you actually look behind the sale, it's the same price. There's, they're messing with you. Um, it's just when people see the word sale, they think immediately it's the lowest price and they purchase it. 
There's other little things that department stores do, like Target. The number at the very end of the price of the item, this number right here, actually tells you whether it's going to go up and down in price in the next couple days. Like if it's a one, it's the lowest price it's going to be. If it's like a two, it means like the second day of the week it's going lower, like on a Tuesday. It's like this, there's this weird code that they have in the store. You'd only know that if you actually added somebody that works there. So I know Target sometimes before, like if they do an actual sale, they'll raise the price of the item yeah. and then do the sale so it's actually like two bucks off. Yeah. So um, that that happens over like when it leads up to Black Friday deals. The prices of items in stores actually get higher and higher through the months leading up to Black Friday. So when they have the sale, it comes right back to normal again. <laughs> so you're not actually saving anything. Uh, that's something that you need to check. Like, if you know you want to purchase something over Black Friday, you should check well in advance what those prices are, because on Black Friday it may not be a sale. So you got to you got to be kind of cautious in that. Like and plus, July. yeah, and don't be afraid to go online and check. Every major department store will, will price adjust the other stores that are around it, and online stores like Amazon, Newegg, and whatever the other department stores are online. Hyper Direct. Tiger Direct, yeah, they'll, they'll price match all of those as long as that they're certified and it's not some random person selling on like eBay, they won't price check for that. Um, but again, do we feel comfortable with the discount idea? Let's do one more, and I'm going to show you a shortcut for doing discounts. A shortcut that a lot of people like, I'm surprised they're never taught. So uh, let me let me explain. So let's do another one. Let's say we're going to purchase, um, I'm going to Let's purchase a new pair of um, Apple headphones. They have those new AirPods. I think they're kind of cool. Um, $159, actually. Oh, sorry. So, so Apple good. AirPods. Kind of want some. Yeah, so AirPods. All right. Kind of want some, so they're, uh, they're $159. $159.99. And let's say, for some reason, um, we're going to get, let's go, let's go 5% off. They're not going to do a big sale. We're going to go 5%. 5% discount, 5% off. So maybe this is like some sale that the, the store did, maybe Apple did it online. I want to know what prices of those headphones are. Okay. So what do we need to do? You do times 159.99. Okay, so we're taking 159.99. Times. We're going to multiply by. 0 0.05. 0 0.05, all right. So I'm going to multiply by 0 0.05. This will tell me how much money I'm getting discounted. So the, the, what I'm going to save, basically, my savings. What am I saving? Seven dollars and ninety-nine cents. Seven dollars and ninety-nine cents. Not bad. Eight bucks off. Not a bad deal, right? So eight bucks. I I, I would hope it would be more. But I'd I mean, rather than eight bucks. I mean, still, you know, they're taking some money off. I don't have to pay full price. I'd rather than fifteen percent off. All right, yeah. And now, what we have to do in the final end, what do we have to do with the 159? We have to subtract, I mean, yeah, yeah we have to subtract. Yeah, we have to subtract our savings. And that will sh that should tell us what my final price is. It's going to be 152.00. So that's the price. Now, obviously, that's not the final sticker price, or uh, the final like, price you're going to pay the register, because registers have sales tax, depending on what state you live in. Sales tax will be higher or lower, depending on the state. Uh, we'll, we'll discuss that in the next, the next couple of examples. All right, any questions with the type of problem we've worked on here so far? No. Okay, now time for the shortcut. Okay, do you see the work that we've done? We've taken you know, price times percent off. There is an easier way to do this problem, and this is the one that a lot of people don't know, um, or at least never thought of before. When you're, when you're having a price of an item and you're taking so much money off, that means you're not paying the full 100% of the price, correct? You're not paying all 100%. You are paying a smaller percent of that. If normally you're going to pay 100% on an item, well, what I would like you to do, take the 100% and subtract whatever the discount is. This will tell you what you're actually paying on the sticker. So 100% minus 15% is 85%. This is actually what you're paying for that item. You're paying 85% of what it actually costs. That number is the secret shortcut. Instead of doing this work, where you take your, you know, your Xbox times 15, figure out that number, and then subtract it later, if you actually know what you're paying for the item, 
That's the number I want you to take times 250 bucks. So your $250 Xbox, you take it times 0.85 on a calculator, and it automatically tells you 212.50. Now, it'll actually do the math for you without having to subtract and doing a two step. Hey. For sure. You can't start running math tests, can you? Yeah, can I start your math test? Yeah. Uh, I can't. Sorry. Yeah, that's right. That's Sorry. Right, if you come back maybe in uh, 10 minutes or 12, maybe. All right. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks. All right. All right. Um, but that's your little shortcut. So what you're actually doing is you're taking 100% of the price time or subtracting whatever your discount is, and this is the price you're paying. That is a little shortcut you can do in a store. So. For instance, on my Apple AirPods, instead of multiplying by 5% and then whatever that number is subtracting later, what should I multiply by instead? Say it again. What should I multiply by instead of 5%? 95%. Uh, 95%. Because I'm actually paying 95% of the cost, not the full 100%. And what this will do is if you actually have this in this, your shortcut. It'll actually just tell you what your discount is. It'll actually tell you what the sticker price is automatically. That is 100% of the price minus the discount. So there, there's two ways to do that problem. Okay, some people really just like to know what the 5% is. They like to figure out, okay, it's the $7.99, and you subtract, right? I, I usually do the shortcut. 100% of the price minus whatever my discount is. And I just, it automatically tells me. My calculator will actually tell me what the price is. Okay, so. I'm going to give you a problem right now, I want you to try it by yourself. And I'm just going to make some number, and I want to see if you can figure out the actual number, and I'm going to walk around, I'm going to check if it's on the paper. Do so you have to do one. it by the You can do it anyway. You can do it the old school way where you actually subtract, or you can do it by the shortcut. I don't care. I'm going to leave that on the board so you can use whatever one you look for. Okay? All right, so here's your problem. Okay, we're going to buy... We're going to buy a book. We're just going to buy some book that you that you want to read. The book is going to be 1995 in the store. But for some reason, on the first day of sale, you get 30% off. I want to know what your sticker price is. I want to know what you're going to pay for that book if it's 30% off and it's 1995. So once you have it, I'd like to put it in your notes, put it somewhere in your notes, and I want to see where you're getting your numbers. I want to see how you're doing it. Okay, now, here's my question, because I know a lot of you are done. What method did you do? Did you do the shortcut or the long way? Shortcut. Shortcut. Okay, so what, what was the number for the shortcut instead of 30? 70%. 70%. This is actually what you're paying 70% of the full price, not not 100%, third, or you're doing 30 less than that, which is 70. So if you're doing the shortcut, you take 0.7, which is 70%, right, 0.70, .70, 0 
you're going to take that times the price, 1995, and you got something like 19 or 13.965 on the screen. Agree? The, the actual cash register would round that up. It would actually say 13.97. It would actually round it up. What? So the cash register Yeah, it'll charge you one penny more. So um, just to know that, because if there's ever a number after that, it just rounds it up. So 13.97. Okay, now if you did not do it by that method, you would have to actually figure out what 30% of 1995 is. So 1995 times the 30%. So point three, this would actually tell you what your number is that you're saving, which is roughly about $2.99 you know, or something like that. And then you'd have to subtract the 1995 minus that number. And that would actually tell you the same number, 13.965. And again, it would be whatever that decimal would be around it. <coughs> All right, questions, comments about what they actually did there? Okay. That's discounts. So anytime you see that in a store, you'll probably have a better appreciation of what they're doing there. Most department stores will actually put the sticker on there. They'll just tell you what your price is. Always double check that, see if it's correct. Um, always price check, take it to one of those price checkers in the aisles to see if it's actually lower price than it is. Sometimes, a lot of people don't even know this, um, department stores have big sales. They won't mark everything in the store with sales. Too much stuff. So there's a lot of stuff that are on the shelves that have been on sale for a long time, they just don't mark them. So you'd be surprised when you're in a department store, some of the stuff is half off. Target's got that app that you can scan something. Yeah, that's that cartwheel thing, that's yeah. awesome. So if you're in a target, anyway. All right, ever uncomfortable discounts. Okay, all right, now, sales tax, way different. Sales tax is a tax that's differentiated per state that you live in, and, it, and it's, the, it's that cost, that, that sales tax it goes to schools, it goes to road construction, it goes to any public services. It's really, it goes for public uh, purposes. I know there's certain days of the year that all the money just goes to education. Sometimes it goes to uh, law enforcement and, uh, and actual uh, EMT and uh, departments like that. Um, so you've got to kind of know what day. There's certain days in, in Iowa that they'll charge you no sales tax on clothing. There's like a certain day of the year that they'll do that. Minnesota yeah, Minnesota has no sales tax on clothing, but no matter where you're at. Uh, their prices are tending to be a little bit higher to make up that cost. Um, uh, there's certain states that have no sales tax at all. It's like Montana, I think, has zero sales tax. Like none. Um, uh, there are some states that have super crazy high sales tax, like New York City, where it's like 13%. Um, Iowa is 7%. We used to be, I think, what, 10 years ago, it used to be 5.5 .5 or something like that. It kind of creeps, it goes up and down depending on who the governor is. They can raise and lower it. Um, that money goes for good purposes, don't get me wrong. Um, but it does add a serious cost to a, to a purchase. So, for, for instance, let's do this Xbox purchase. And let's say you had zero discount on your Xbox. So no discount anymore. Okay, so whatever the sale was, you missed it. Maybe maybe the sale ran out on Saturday and you went in Sunday. So in Iowa, if you're going to purchase this Xbox, in Iowa, there's a 7% sales tax. It's going to be 267.5. Yeah. Um, so this is the part that always weirds people out. It says 250 on the on the tag. You walk to the register and suddenly the register person tells you 260. And you're like, it said 250 on the sticker because they're charging you sales tax. It's it's seven percent basically per dollar that you're actually charged. So what you need to do, and this and this is the actual way you're supposed to do it, you take 250 times or multiply by 0 0.07, and that will give you what your sales tax that you're gonna have to add on. Um, so 250 bucks times 0 0.07, what do you say, it was 17.50 or something like that? Yeah, 17.50. 17.50. And we're going to add that on. So your actual like price of this, this Xbox you're going to be paying is 250 bucks plus the sales tax. So sales tax gets added in. It's not like discounts. Discounts, you subtract it off. Sales tax, you have to add back in. So it is 267.50. Okay, so that, that, for some reason, people really struggle with that. They really struggle with like the concept of what sales tax is, what it's used for, 
there's very good purposes for it. That's why the roads here in Iowa are actually really, I think, really good. Compared to if you go to a different state around us, they can have terrible well, some roads. Some, some are. Some are. Oh, yeah, some are. But we do a pretty nice job of fixing those when they need them. And that's what a lot of the sales stuff might go to education, civil, civil workplace, uh, road construction, and stuff. All right. So, um, are we talking about the sales tax idea? Yeah. Okay. Pretty now, easy. now, let's do one more, um, and then I want to show you the shortcut. Because there is a shortcut for doing sales tax that a lot of people won't know about. Um, all right. So, let's say we're going to purchase a new item. So, so we can be something new. A new DVD player. DVD player. All right. Blu-ray or DVD player or something like that. Blu-ray. Okay. So Blu-ray. All right. Here we go. Blu-ray. Um, you know, player of some type, some, some machine, maybe a 4K one. Uh, let's say it's 150 bucks, or 100. Let's go 155 dollars. So we're gonna buy kind of a nicer one. It's got a lot of features on it. Um, so 155 dollar Blu-ray player. Um, so let's say we're gonna purchase this in not Iowa, but let's say we went to, um, let's say we went to Missouri, let's say, and Missouri has a 3.5 percent sales tax. Oh gosh. Oh. So for some reason, you know, you're in another state and you decide to purchase this item, has a different sales tax, you're going to have to pay that. That's fine. It's lower than I was, so it's fine. So what we need to do, take your, take your price times the, uh, times the sales tax. So $155, we're going to multiply that. Now, how do I change this number, 3.5%, into a decimal? Two spaces. So what is the number now? 0 0.035. Good. That's the number we have to multiply by. When when that when that happens, it'll give us what our sales tax is. So somebody have a calculator, please. 155 times 0 0.035. What do we get? We got 5.425. Or two five. All right. So basically, uh, that number is about 5.43. So five dollars and 43 cents. Right. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. All right. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add that in. So so you're can we get a different number? I get 5.25. 5.25? Yeah. Oh, wait, never mind. Never mind. I didn't want to All right, so we were right. 5.43. All right. You had to be worried there for a second. All right, so we're going to add that $5 back in. So $155. We're going to add in the sales tax, which is 543 And we get 160.43. That, that's what they'll charge you at the register. That you're gonna to have to pay to purchase. Okay, now there's certain things um, that you should know, especially like in electronics. Uh, Best Buy. This is one that a lot of people know. You can haggle the price of a TV in Best Buy. Mm -hmm. Haggling is when you try to uh, try to get them to come down in prices. They'll they'll do that. That that price of that TV is not set where it is on the sticker, especially if it's like brand new and there's no sales on it. They have a couple hundred dollars leeway. And the, you can work them down, especially if you know you don't, you're not happy with the price. You tell them like, "Hey, I'll purchase it for you know maybe 300 bucks less than what you have it marked for." And they don't go for it. You don't need to purchase it. You can walk away, and that salesman or saleswoman will definitely try to make the deal for you. So they'll say they have to go talk to their manager or something. Like, they always so do. They always do it. They just want you to wait and sweat it out. If they come back and they say they can't do it, walk. Trust me, they'll they'll make the deal if they want. So. I got a mouse at Best Buy and they did that. Yeah, you, yeah you, can, you can haggle the price of certain things in those stores, which I always find really weird. Uh, cars. Cars, there's a there's a little bit of negotiation with cars. You can haggle a little bit uh, because those prices are not set. So They have a lot of leeway, though. Yeah, but, and cars especially. There's a ton of leeway on cars. But again, you do have to worry about, like especially like on these purchases, you have to worry about if there's any discounts. You should always check that. Check online, see if there's any better prices still price match. And and you gotta worry about sales tax, because that price is added back in. Alright, now, this is my last example today. I want to talk about the shortcut for doing sales tax. Last one that I want to cover today. Um, so let's do this, let's do the shortcut for my Xbox here. So we're gonna kind of do that. Alright, so here's the shortcut. When you want to add sales tax back in automatically, and you have a calculator in front of you, most people have cell phones. Your cell phone can do this for you. Take your price of your item, whatever you're going to purchase, 
and we're going to multiply by the sales tax, right, the 7% or whatever state you're in. So Iowa is 0 0.7, right, that's sales tax. But put a 1 in front of it. Put a 1 in front of that sales tax. So 1.07. Or if we're in Missouri, 1.035. When you multiply these numbers together, it will actually tell you the final price automatically. It'll add the sales tax back in automatically. Now, why it's doing that is you are going to pay 100% of the item, because there's no discount, plus the 7%. So it's actually 107% that you're paying for that item. That's what you have to be thinking about. So when you move the decimal over, it's 1.07. That's why it actually works. And it will actually add in sales tax automatically for you. That's actually how the register works. The button is programmed to put one in front of sales tax. All right, any questions on sales tax, purchasing items? You don't know all this because you work at like three or something? No, I just work in a lot of different places, but I usually go to the stores. Does one of your family members do? What? Does one of your family members? Many of them do. Yeah. So, all right. Questions on any of the stuff we talked about today. Now, obviously, today was kind of doing this this idea of examples, trying to get some um, some of these. On Monday when we get back, on Monday uh, when we get back after spring break, um, we're going to do a little in, in class activity where I'm going to have some items on the board, and I'm going to give you kind of a goal of what you have to try to purchase, a certain number of items or a certain price range. So the money you get back will be kind of a fun day or a move around. We'll have a lot of different things you can actually purchase. So, okay? <clears throat> Any questions with what we're going to be doing? All right. Today, if you have not finished your story comments, page 150, 152, 155, that's the stuff I gave you yesterday. That is your goal today. That is due the Monday you get back from spring break. So definitely, if you're not done with that assignment, you need to take your book home over spring break. Because that is a very large assignment. Okay. Uh, I'll go through the uh, well, what do you have six period? Six period? Yeah. I probably have to go study all. Okay. The problem is you gotta tell me when you're done. I should finish. Okay. Because if you don't, I can go into six period. You're gonna kill him and kiss me. So Alright, so um, oh, are you in period three? Mm -hmm. So it'll be ward three right. I'm just trying to right. pass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.